It's late August and I'm on my way north to Michigan and its upper peninsula after spending close to a week here in Amanda, Ohio. I was visiting with friends, resting my legs and body and getting over a flu bug. I now feel all better and looking forward to getting back on the road. My plan today is to say goodbye to everyone and ride along the eastern edge of the city of Columbus stopping at a bicycle shop with hopes of figuring out why my bike keeps skipping gears. After that I hope to go as far north as possible and maybe end up at a state park I see on the map. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to cover some ground. I'm ready to see Michigan, the Upper Peninsula, and I've been uh, really dreaming about Wisconsin and Minnesota and North Dakota for a long time, and it seems crazy to go north right now with just a month left of real summer, but I gotta do it. I'm here in Amanda saying goodbye to Eric and uh, Heather. Heather's uh, Scott's uh, daughter, and Eric's the boyfriend. A good friend of mine and he wants to ride the bike so he's going for a little a little crash and burn yeah i'm trying to talk him into coming with me someday here's one of my best friends heather it's scott's daughter and uh we've gotten kind of close and I'm, I'm trying to convince her to bike with me but she won't it's never gonna happen she's uh <laughs> come on i don't camp all right i'll keep trying <laughs> Let me build it first, then we'll go. <laughs> Alright, cool. <laughs> I'm back out! Woo! Love being out here. Man, you get caught in this routine of being lazy and uh it just consumes you. I wasn't lazy, I was forced to stay because of not feeling good at all, but well, being out here is uh, good stuff, man. Woo! Right away I start feeling my glutes acting up. It's been almost a week since I've been on the bike and I never took the time to stretch at all so my muscles are all tight and complaining. So I stopped to fill up my water bottle with electrolytes in hopes of avoiding the inevitable. Eventually my right glute sets enough off on this day but I managed to ride close to 45 miles before I had to stop and recover for the next day. Another lesson learned but not the only one I had today. During this week off the bike I changed my chain and as soon as I started riding my drivetrain started skipping gears. If it wasn't for the flat terrain from Amanda to the bike shop I was heading to, I would have needed to find someone to give me a ride. If you guys can hear that, it's my uh, cassette. So I'm heading to a bike shop uh, on the east side of Columbus, Ohio. Guy agreed to uh, try to help me out with it. I've tried everything I can on my own, but I don't know if it's the hub, the rear hub the cassette or the new chain I just put on it. Really looking forward to uh, getting some help from these people trying to figure out why I'm slipping while changing gears. <laughs> I'm here with uh, Damon uh, in the Cyclist Connection in uh, Columbus, Ohio? No. Yeah, Canal Winchester. Canal Winchester, Ohio. They're, they were like so cool. I just rode up and they were ready to take a look at my bike it's a mess uh, they're saying that because uh, my chain that i just changed the old one was close to six thousand miles that it got used to the sprockets of my cassette and that once i changed the the new chain and it wasn't worn out it wasn't lining up correctly so they believe that it's skipping especially in the smaller sp sprockets of the cassette so they're going to take a quick look and uh see what they can do this is mark and that's damon that sounds better Oh yeah. Yeah, it was just where I was rubbing the fender right here. There's a little off. Fair, bring that over. Let's, let's stop that. Check it Be out. Safe. See you later. <laughs> See you guys. Wow, I cannot wait to ride. It's like 
I was struggling getting here, slipping constantly on every other gear. That's the shop. I had the best morning hanging out with those guys and it just energizes me to keep being around bicycling. Bike feels insane. Like it's like brand new. I'm so fortunate to have met these guys, Mark and Damon and the owner Rick who like they called and he said just take whatever you have to out of a bike that's new there and it happened to be the same cassette and then they tweaked it. It feels amazing, I'm super charged by it and uh, I'm gonna go ride. Not easy riding here. I'm getting diverted a lot. And the main road I was on, and I hope not this next one, has absolutely no shoulder. So I'm kind of right on top of the white line. But people have been really nice, slowing down and waiting. And I've been given enough space, so I feel comfortable. That's the kind of shoulder I'm looking for. Getting through the eastern edge of Columbus through a suburban city of Reynoldsburg was not easy. It was extremely busy with heavy traffic, lots of intersections, hardly any shoulders and no bike paths. As soon as I found a sidewalk I got right on it and kept on riding until I found a much needed but momentary relief riding through a neighborhood. I've succumbed to the sidewalk and it's a nice sidewalk so I'm gonna use it up. I'm east of Columbus. Quite a diverse uh, amount of uh, roads I'm taking went from a super busy no shoulder to a quiet neighborhood now this was a great day to wear orange it is busy where I'm at busier than almost anything I've been on no shoulders either. Not many. I finally get past the city of Reynoldsburg in the town of Black Click and all of a sudden I'm into suburban neighborhoods. The heavy traffic settled down a lot but not my right glute. By now it had had enough of me stretching it and regardless of the heavy electrolyte doses and hydration it was ready to stop. I find it extremely important not to press on a cramped muscle that keeps locking up as it becomes prone to tearing and causing way more damage. My right cheek is locked up. I mean that's I gotta do some major stretching tonight and uh, and I don't want to push myself too much. I'm at 41 miles. I'm gonna do 45 today with all the issues and stops I had. Late start, saying goodbye to everybody and uh, and it's also uh, it's also good because I was like sick just yesterday, not feeling great at all. So it'd be good to just have this be my first day back on the bike and and just uh not cause any havoc if I can help it. Once I ride over State Route 161 I enter the northeastern Columbus city of New Albany where I find semi-quiet roads. Looking at my options on the map, I realized I'm way too far to reach the state park I was hoping for. So with my right glute having had enough for the day and my late start, I was without options other than paying for one of the two pricey hotels available in New Albany on this weekend day. Last night's a perfect example of the difficulties in bicycle touring in the United States at times. I uh, had to go to that bicycle shop, so then my route got sort of changed to what my plans were to get to a state park, and I was sort of pressed into being in a 
shoulderless road most of the time. And then since I was off the bike for that six days and I terribly mistakenly didn't stretch, I pulled like a bit of my right butt cheek muscle. <laughs> so I was kind of like stopping and stretching it out several times. And then after 40 something miles, it got laid on me like five something in the afternoon. And then north of uh, New Albany where I'm at in Ohio, there's absolutely nothing for another 30 miles. So with my butt cheek like that, I wasn't gonna just be riding along for another 30 miles. So I was stuck in this area that only had three hotels, no places to camp. And one of the hotels, the cheaper of the three was uh, full because of a wedding. It's a Friday night, so the hotel prices go up. And I ended up paying $250 to stay at this place, which was really nice and all, but I don't want to spend $250 on a hotel. I, I couldn't be a bicycle tour if, uh, if I had to do that every night. So, for, so now from now on, like the next bunch of days, I'm going to really pay a lot of attention so I can stay in places and make up the expense of staying here. So that's how it goes sometimes. Let's uh, ride. I want to do 74 miles. Hopefully all the stretching I did last night and this morning on my right butt cheek will uh, allow me to do it. This scenario happens to me several times as I cross the country. It probably has to do with my route choices and the lack of camping and more affordable places to stay along their way. I'm not one to follow already predetermined routes such as the ones from Adventure Cycling Association where they have figured out this dilemma best possible having created over 50,000 miles of routes across the United States during their 48 years of experience. I guess I prefer to go my own way and not know how I'll get to my final destinations. Plus doing it this way offers me a greater sense of adventure and forces me into some crazy moments to solve my way out of. But clearly yesterday and for many other days to come, it ends up putting a serious dent in my budget. What's going on? Five miles out and my butt cheek's fine. It's a little bit trying to tighten up on me, but I'm super hydrated and been drinking my Pedialyte electrolyte powder, which I don't use all the time because I don't want my body getting used to it, but I do keep it around for scenarios like this. And my plan is to stop every 10 miles or so and stretch it out, even though I don't feel a pull. Just keep with it and safeguard it getting tight when I become dehydrated because I always get dehydrated. It's really hard to keep fluids. Hey guys. Hi, how are you? Hey bud, how's it going? Good. That's pretty much all I'm doing is uh, lefts and rights and rights and lefts and all these country roads. What's your name, sir? Kevin Barth. And you're saying that these soybeans that are getting unloaded are from last year's harvest of this gentleman? Yeah, they're from this guy's farm from October last year. He's had them in the bin and then he sold them, contracted them um, down in Columbus. So we're gonna haul them out. And they do fine through the winter in the bin? As long as the moisture is down, the moisture needs to be down under 12% uh, and they'll store indefinitely. So this is the time that the Columbus uh, dealer wanted them to uh, It's the time that he wanted to sell them and needed the money to probably pay for 
you know, fuel or whatever. Well, thanks uh, for letting me video. Thanks for doing it. I appreciate it. So far, so good. I'm away from the Columbus uh, traffic, enjoying lots and lots of flat miles. I was uh, looking to see what kind of elevation I have today and it's an entire 420 feet of climbing in the 76 miles that, that I wanna do. So I'm like just going fast and there's no traffic on these roads at all real nice scenery all around just uh, enjoying because after all the pennsylvania hills this is like cycling heaven really all you do is just see red tail hawks and corn soybeans <laughs> and farm country and farm houses and uh, so far lots of kind people as usual I stop at this convenience store in the town of Marengo where I eat a quick sandwich and fill my water bottles. Even though without much hope of it happening, I also called and left a message with a warm showers host in Willard where I was looking to finish my day. I still had 50 miles to ride and most of the day to get a call back, but being such short notice, I wasn't really expecting it. All right, 25 miles, 24 and a half, a third of the way into at least my shortest possible day today. But I have uh, aspirations of more if I can do more. We'll see. It's only like not even one o'clock. Flat ground, it's nice to you. Makes you just uh, pile up the miles, even though I'm stopping and recording and documenting what I'm doing. Let's keep at it. Riding through the Midwestern states of the country is actually a lot of fun. There are countless flat miles to roll over with your wheels going through farm country that never feels congested. There is the occasional farming equipment to check out as one keeps making these left and right turns along the way and it doesn't ever take long before reaching small towns and cities that break up the scenery enough to entertain. Everyone you meet is very kind and welcoming and there is never a shortage of lively dogs and wildlife to run into. <laughs> He needed to be more uh, enthusiastic, a little bit closer, please. Say hello for real. It's hot, 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 like super hot, like very hot. It's hot. What's going on? He was listening to music. 
That's the only way you can cope with this kind of heat. Holy crap, I think I have a tailwind. I'm going like 19. I just uh, checked my phone and I got a message from the warm showers person, lady named Sue. Woo! I got lucky. That's the second time anybody's ever called me back. And I was just uh, talking earlier about how I tend not to get the call back, but uh, she seems really nice. And um, I'm 25 miles away. Well, just spoke with Sue, she's super cool. And uh, she's uh, brand new to warm showers, which is crazy because I'm new too. So it'll be uh, interesting to uh, share knowledge. Uh, a little bit I have and whatever she has. So I'm 23 and a half miles or so from her place. She's texting me the info and uh, I'm gonna ride my way there. I'm getting a little boost of uh, energy with the cooling weather. It's about 5.30 and a uh, spectacular evening coming on right now. It's so beautiful. I got really tired there with the heat, but now that it's cooler and um, I really managed myself with the hydration and eating here and there when I had a chance. 13 more miles. I still got a little ways to go. What a day, uh, so it'll be 79 miles or so, maybe not quite, but 78 something and uh, a lot of hours. I don't even know what time it is. I'm kind of out of it a little bit. Not, I'm not destroyed, but I'm tired. And I'm uh, very close to uh, Sue's uh, warm showers set up. So I'm like, wanna respect her privacy and not record anything until I can ask her and get to know her. So, uh, keep you guys posted but it was a phenomenal day the cooling temperatures there at the end really energized me and I was really cranking the last 20 miles it felt strong I'm psyched to get going all right I'm out of here talk to you guys tomorrow So I'm here with uh, Sue who like totally took care of me last night. It was her first time in warm showers and my second time. So it was kind of like a little nerve wracking for both of us, but a lot of fun too. We talked all night and she's a insanely great cyclist who has been all over the place. So tell us a little bit about how, how like some of the stuff you've done that you told me last night. 
Um, I did a couple bike and barge tours in the Netherlands and I went across the country in segments at different areas. Some of it was fundraising um, for, diff for cycling to help end poverty. Um, most of the time I do like two to three weeks only, so I do it in segments. You said that you've done all the counties in Ohio. I have done all the counties in Ohio. This is, I went through one time in Ohio and I thought, I've been here, I've been here. I wonder how, how many counties I've been here. And there's 88 counties in Ohio. And at that time I was in the upper 20s and I thought, huh, why not? No time frame and so I just did it over a few years. And So how many times do you cycle a week? Uh, two to four maybe. Depends if I'm really training for an event. And how do you manage during the winter when it's freezing out here? Cycle in the stationary bike inside. So you do keep up with your, your cycling yeah. during the winter the best you can? Yeah. It's not a trainer so I have this little table on, like an overbed table at the hospital. So I can put my computer on it and watch different things where I put a book on it and just read a book and I'll keep wanting to read a book, another chapter, another chapter, find out I go another 10 miles or something like that. So. And then you you said you were leaving on the 10th to uh, go to the Mississippi River Trail yeah, Mississippi, with some friends? Mississippi River Trail starting at the headwaters of uh, Matasca State Park well, and going down to St. Louis. Sue, I can't thank you enough for having me in your house. It was a very fun experience and I think I made a friend, you know, yeah. so we got to stay in touch. Maybe I'll be down at the Keys. Yeah, I'd love to host you in my place sometime. It was fun. All I right. enjoyed it. I hope other people can come too. Thank you. I, I think yeah, you. I think they will. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bye, Sue. Bye. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you.